Hey kids, it's Pastor Lee. I am so happy to see you today. Welcome to Children's Worship. This is our second week of doing a special worship service just for you, and I am so happy uh, to be able to worship with you because this is a really, really special day. Uh, this is a birthday party. Did you know that? Today is the birthday of the church. It's called the Day of Pentecost. Uh, and, and on the day of Pentecost, many, 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 many years ago, uh, was the day that the Holy Spirit came to all of Jesus' disciples and, and sort of told them what to do uh, to build a church. And so we look back on that day and says, that's the day the church started. That was the, the day that the church was born. It's our birthday. And so we're going to celebrate today. We're going to have a party, just like you have a birthday party on your birthday. And I have one on my birthday still. And so I'm so glad that you're here this morning. And so if you're ready, let's worship together. Come on. Yeah, we're going to sing, I've Got That Joy. You can sing along with us, okay? Here we go. Stephen, and he really believed in Jesus, and some bad people killed him. Well, after that happened, all the believers left Jerusalem and scattered all over the world. And one of the ones that left was named Philip, and that's what our story is about today, and him talking to someone God sent him to. Are y'all ready? Let's go. The Bible it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 8. Verses 26 through 40. Philip, like his friend Stephen, was a Jesus follower. Both men had been chosen to help new believers who needed food or special care. At your service. But after Stephen was killed, the Jewish religious leaders became even more bold in hunting down people who followed Jesus. They were led by a young man named Saul. Go house to house, find these Jesus people and toss them in jail. Many of the new believers left Jerusalem and scattered, but everywhere they went, they shared the story of Jesus. Jesus is God's son. He came to rescue all of us. Philip traveled to a town in Samaria where he told everyone about Jesus and even made sick people well through God's power. I can walk, look, I can dance, <laughs> praise God. Philip and the new believers in the city were filled with joy, but then an angel of the Lord appeared to Philip. Go south to the desert road that leads from Jerusalem to Gaza. Stephen probably had some questions. Wait, what? Everything's going so well here. What good can I do in the desert? 
Still, Philip set out immediately. He was about to discover that he wasn't the only one with questions. Far to the south, on that very desert road, a man from Ethiopia was speeding along in his chariot, reading from a scroll. He was led like a sheep to be killed. Who's he? He who? The man was a high official in charge of everything owned by the Ethiopian queen. He believed in God and had chosen to become a Jew, even traveling for days to worship God at the temple in Jerusalem. But still, he was filled with questions as he read from scripture. This prophet, Isaiah, I don't understand what he's saying. As Philip hiked along the road, he spotted the Ethiopian official's chariot ahead. God's spirit spoke to Philip. Go to that chariot. Stay near it. On my mark, get set. Philip ran until he came alongside the chariot, where the official was still absorbed in the words of Isaiah. When he was treated badly, he was refused a fair trial. <laughs> Do you understand what you're reading? The official's eyebrows shut up, and he nearly dropped the scroll. Stop the chariot! As the chariot slowed, the official peered down at Philip. How can I understand? I need someone to explain it to me. I'm someone. Then come sit up here with me. Thank you. Show me where you're reading. Right here. He was led like a sheep to be killed, just as lambs are silent while their wool is being cut off. He did not open his mouth. When he was treated badly, he was refused a fair trial. Who can say anything about his children? His life was cut off from the earth. The official frowned in concentration. Tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about? Himself or someone else? He's talking about the one God has sent to rescue all of us. His name is Jesus. As the two men traveled along that hot, dusty road, Philip shared the whole story of Jesus, how Jesus gave his life for each of us and, and was raised to life again. This, this, this is amazing. This changes everything. Ahead, the men could see a few lone palm trees. As they approached, sunlight flared off a clear pool of water. Look, water, what can stop me from being baptized? <laughs> Let's do it. Stop the chariot. Philip and the official climbed down from the chariot, and Philip led the man down into the water. I baptize you in the name of Jesus. Yes, yes, praise God. Dripping wet and filled with joy, the two men came up out of the water. Philip, you'd love Ethiopia. You really should. Philip? Philip? Philip had suddenly, completely disappeared. In fact, God's spirit had whisked him away. He's gone. Only God could have done that. Let's get a move on. I've got more reading to do. <laughs> the Ethiopian official went on his way, a changed man and Philip found himself in the town of Azotus. Um, what just happened? Well, I'm sure there are more people around here who need to hear about Jesus. Both Philip and the Ethiopian official had continued to be faithful and seek God, even when they couldn't see the whole picture. And the story of Jesus continued to spread. Wasn't that an awesome video? Now, let me finish this. I gotta read because I don't wanna mess up anything. Philip probably had a ton of questions on why God would be sending him down to the desert road. And the Ethiopian official had a ton of questions about who Jesus was. My point to all this is that God wants us to ask questions. And it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to ask questions to our parents, to me, to anybody in the church because we all love you. We thank you for being here. Hey kids, I'm delivering crafts and it's about Pentecost and there's gonna be pinwheels that y'all are gonna have to put together and I want you to take pictures and text them to me and the best one will win. Thanks. Hey kids, I am so happy to have worshiped with you today. I'm so happy that you were here and I look forward to seeing you again next week. But before we go, let's say a prayer together. Come on, let's pray. Dear God, thank you so very much for this day. Thank you for this chance to come together and to celebrate our birthday as a church. And thank you for Jesus. Lord, we just pray that you would just continue to, to help us, to, to guide us, to show us what it means 
to follow Jesus. Lord, help us to follow and love Jesus always. In his name we pray. Amen. Have a great week. Bye-bye.